This is the last experiment for the quarter. It is a preparation of a C4, C5 acetate ester. So the synthesis of ester is a reaction between carboxylic acid with alcohol in the presence of a sulfuric acid as a catalyst to give esters. So we will learn about the process of making ester, product isolation and purification, and structure determination. We have done uh, product isolation and purification before. If you remember uh, in a caffeine lab, extraction of caffeine followed by isolation and purification. So you are familiar with uh, this um, uh, technique number 10, uh, which is extraction, separation, and drying agents. We will uh, do similar uh, steps in this uh, uh, ester purification process. Okay. Uh, be sure to read Experiment 59, this uh, lab procedure itself for making esters. And uh, Techniques 14 is cover simple distillation, that is a uh, uh, product, uh, product uh, purification process. And for structure analysis, we will use uh, IR spectroscopy and also NMR spectroscopy. So some instructor may uh, ask you to do uh, NMR spectroscopy to determine the structure of the esters. Okay, it is optional. If so, if uh, uh, instructor do not uh, uh, ask you to do NMR, then you can uh, skip the last uh, lab lecture of this uh, last uh, last slide of this lab lecture. Okay. Ester is a naturally occurring molecule, and ester is also a name of a functional group, and they have a sweet smelling chemical properties. If you look at ester functional group, it is a combination between alcohol group and carboxylic acid. Okay. On the alcohol group, you have an LK group, R. R prime and on the carboxylic acid is a different LK group R. So if you react these two molecules, you get ester. Okay. So ester can be found in nature. So you basically you can extract them out of fruits or or the or flowers or, or or leaves. Okay. So to get a sweet smelling naturally natural product chemistry, right? So sweet smelling molecules, you can extract them out of uh, uh, nature. If you're trying to synthesize them in the lab, you have to take different type of alcohols and different types of carboxylic acid to get uh, ester, to make ester. For example, if you're trying to uh, get banana flavor, you would take pentanol, pentanol and react it with ethanoic acid to get pentaethanoid, right? That would be ester for pentaethanoic ester for but this banana flavor. So this ethanoic means that is an IUPAC name for acetate ester. So I'll put a note here, acetate. Okay, so it, so it, it will be penta uh, acetate ester or ethanoic ester. Okay, uh, let's say if you're uh, trying to synthesize um, coconut flavor here, you would take a butyl or butanol and uh, react it with heptanoic acid to get butyl heptanoic as an ester. Okay, so the naming of the ester, you take the first word of the alcohol, okay, the, you would take the alcohol group first and then combine it with a carboxylic acid group, which is the second word, okay. Um, so let's say you're trying to uh, give you another example right here. If you're trying to identify a uh, minty flavor, uh, it will be propyl salicyclic, right? So it will be reaction between propanol and uh, salicyclic acid, right? So this is uh, how you were synthesized in the lab, right? So in this uh, experiment, what we'll do is we'll take the same carboxylic acid Okay, we will take the same carboxylic acid and vary the type of alcohol to make different acetate esters, right? So, so bear in mind that different uh, students will have different alcohol and you will smell them uh, different flavors. So, uh, so pay attention in the lab, all right? So the reaction between acetic acid and alcohol in the presence of a catalyst, uh, sulfuric acid, you get... Uh, Ester, 
okay? We call this uh, synthesis of uh, Fisher esterification, right? I will not go through the detailed mechanism between uh, the reactants, okay? You can do that together with your instructor in the lab, okay? Your task in the lab is to synthesize the acetate ester of unknown alcohol, okay? I think it will be known because 355 also do this uh, synthesis of ester, but the alcohol will be unknown, but for chemistry 251, you will be given a known alcohol, okay? So you will be given uh, possibly uh, this uh, different type of alcohol. It can be one butanol, two butanol, okay? So depending on the alcohol, you will synthesize uh, uh, different type of esters. Remember, the carboxylic acid will be the same, right? It says acetic acid, but alcohol will vary depending on which uh, lab you are in or, or what student get what, okay? So once you get the molecule, okay, once you get the ester, or the product isolated, you will identify the molecule based on uh, infrared spectrometer and also proton NMR spectroscopy. Uh, this is optional, but I will go through that in this lab lecture and also the boiling point of an ester. Okay, from these three data, you can then identify what type of ester you have and verify at the end. Okay. In order to synthesize esters, we need to properly set up the glassware first. So this is an example of reflux uh, glassware you need to set up in the lab. So at the bottom here is a reaction vessels where you would put all the uh, 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 alcohol, acetic acid, and sulfuric acid right in the, in the round bottom flask, and it's connected to a reflux condenser. Right? The condenser is connected to a water hose, so the water will come in right, from the bottom and out from the top, right? What the condenser does is condenser is, uh, it has a running cool water, right? It has a running cool water. As, the, as you heat the reaction, okay, the vapor will climb and as it touch the cold condenser, it will condense back into a liquid mixture and then fall back into the reaction bath. okay? So that's how the reflux, reflux uh, takes place in uh, this, uh, in, in this glassware, okay? On the top here, the reaction uh, setup uh, on the top is uh, packed with a uh, um, drying tube. We call this drying tube because it is packed with calcium chloride, a drying agent, okay? Calcium chloride will trap the, any water vapors from the uh, moisture from the environment and it prevent the moisture from going into the Ref, uh, into the reaction valve, right? You do not want moisture and water going in there, okay? So, so this is the setup for the reflux and make sure that uh, you properly set up the glassware before you heat the uh, 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 round bottom flask with the heating mat, okay? So the heat source will be at the bottom, okay? Another thing to consider is the to take note is the safety concern for sulfuric acid and glacial acetic acid, okay? They are very corrosive, right? So you want to wear uh, appropriate uh, 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 attire. So is uh, you need to wear goggles, make sure to wear gloves and lab coat as well, okay? No exposed skin for this uh, experiment, okay? Or, or any experiment in the lab, okay? You need to make sure that you cover all your skin because it's highly corrosive. Okay, so be careful. And another thing to consider is uh, the reaction condition, right? So the reaction is between, again, uh, CD acid with alcohol and trying to synthesize ester. But bear in mind that the, this uh, reaction is at equilibrium. You see the two arrows here. That means um, product is forming, ester is forming. At the same time, a reactant is forming. So it is at equilibrium. So this is the challenge of this reaction, okay? Uh, so we need to ask, uh, how do we drive the reaction to the right? You know, we need to get ester. We don't want to go back and get uh, alcohol or acetic acid, right? How do we drive the reaction forward to get uh, ester? Uh, in order to do that, um, what you can do is... Um, increase the amount of acetic acid, right? So increase the amount of uh, acetic acid. Okay, we will be using uh, excess amount of it to drive the reaction 
to the right. Okay, we don't want at equilibrium. So you increase the amount up, right? We, we're going to increase the acetic acid amount and drive the reaction forward. Okay. Right. So um, another thing that will help is also to remove water as much as you can. Right. We will we will discuss that later too. Um, so it, another way to do that is also remove the water quickly while the reactant is forming. Okay, but uh, in this experiment, uh, we will use excess amount of acetic acid to to drive the reaction to the right side. Okay. Once you have completed the reaction, we need to isolate the ester product. So in the reaction vessels, remember it contains ester and all the unreacted ester, uh, unreacted I mean uh, acetic acid with. Uh, alcohol and sulfuric acid. So we are reaction vessel is still a mixture, right? It's not the final product. So we need to perform a product isolation. So in order to do that, we will exploit the differential isolability of acid to remove uh, ester from the reaction mixture. Okay. So in this separation scheme, let's look at the first extraction. So basically you will add water into the reaction vessel. Okay. That will form two layers. Right. So in an aqueous layer, most uh, uh, excess acetic acid and sulfuric acid and unreacted alcohol will remain in an aqueous layer. And in organic phase, we have ester with uh, traces of unreacted materials. Right. So that is just the first step of extraction. In the second step of extraction, you will add a um, sodium bicarbonate solution. Okay, that will give uh, two layers again. In an uh, aqueous layer, you re remove um, uh, sulfuric acid, right? Traces of your sulfuric acid will form, react with sodium uh, to form sodium sulfate, and also traces of uh, acetic acid is removed, right? They form a salt and they, they are soluble in aqueous phase and uh, they get removed into an aqueous layer. So on the top layer, you should have organic layer, which mainly contain ester right but ester is still not uh, pure it has traces of water and some alcohol remain here okay but to this organic layer okay we will then further dry out the solution using uh, saturated sodium chloride okay saturated sodium chloride means it is brine it's basically a brine solution to remove last bits of water right or or any of the alcohol present in this in the uh, organic phases right or in organic layer so um, sodium chloride solution will take away the water and alcohol that will be in an aqueous layer and in organic layer you're left with um, uh, mainly ester right mainly ester and then for the last traces of water to be removed you just add uh, uh, anhydrous sodium sulfate Okay, that is a salt, right? That will remove traces of water to form a hydrate, right? So that become this water react with sodium sulfate to become a solid, right? So solid can be left behind and you can pipette out the ester from the flask or from the beaker, okay? From your reaction vessels, you can then uh, pipette out the uh, ester, okay? The solid, uh, well, traces of water forming a solid, they will get left behind. Okay, remember this ester is we still call it crude because it's not pure yet. Okay, how do we know that this is pure? We have to do the final um, distillation, right? Final purification is the distillation step. Okay, in uh, uh, we will monitor the boiling point and then we will determine if this ester is very pure, whether it is pure or not. Okay, so we will discuss the distillation in the next step. So the last step of purification of crude ester is simple distillation. Okay, in order to do that, you need to set up a simple distillation setup before you perform this experiment. So this is another piece of glassware. You need to set it up after the, remember the first one is with reflux. So the second one is distillation setup, okay? So in this uh, setup, uh, at the bottom, you have a round bottom flask which contain crude ester. Remember, it has some impurity, right? Only small amount of impurity. So 
um, crude ester is still uh, in the round bottom flask and is connected to a distillation adapter. Uh, this is plugged on the top with a thermometer, right? The thermometer will measure the boiling point of uh, ester, right? And so if you have uh, ester right here, you know, as it uh, boils, it will hit the thermometer, right? If it hit the thermometer, then the temperature rises in the thermometer and you will record down the boiling point, okay? So you can compare the boiling point of an ester, experimenter uh, ester, with the literature value of a boiling point of an ester, right? Experimenter versus literature value. You can compare both of them, whether you have, uh, you have synthesized the correct ester or not. Okay, once the vapor hit the uh, thermometer, it will register the temperature and the vapor then travel down to condenser right here. Again, this is a water condenser, right? Water cooling condenser. So you water in, water in from the, from the bottom, right? Water out from the top, water out. Okay. So as the vapor touch a cool water condenser, right, it will condense into liquid. Now you have an ester, pure ester collected in this distillate, okay? Before you collect the distillate, make sure to tear the receiving flask. So make sure to weigh this flask before you collect the distillate, right? Because you need to calculate the percent yield, okay? It will be difficult to to get the, the the solution weight if you do if you forget to tear the the flask or forget to weigh the round bottom flask okay so do that and also what you have to do is you need to make sure you smell the ester solution right this, so this will be a pure ester right you make sure you to smell it whether it's sweet smelling it has a banana smell or a minty smell I'm not sure which alcohol you will pick but um, so make sure to smell the sweet smell, okay, in the lab, right? So once you have a purified ester, make sure to determine the percent yield, okay, and observe the boiling point. Don't forget that and compare it with the literature value as well. And um, you will do the structure determination using IR spectroscopy or NMR spectroscopy, okay? You may have to take the IR of the IR spectra, spectrum of the of the isolated uh, ester, or it will be provided to you, I'm not sure. It's depending on the instructor, okay? So we will look through how you can interpret IR and NMR spectroscopy in the next slide, okay? So once you get a purified ester, you need to take the IR spectrum of the product, right? You wanna make sure that you have an ester and not an alcohol. So once you get the IR spectrum, this is what it looks like. Okay, let's say I have isopenta, this is the IR spectrum of isopental acetate ester, and on the y-axis you will see an absorbance band, right? So there are a lot of uh, peaks, right? But you don't need to identify all of them, you just have to identify a major peaks, right? Major peaks and also um, what? You need to uh, compare these major peaks frequency with a uh, uh, IR absorption frequency table written uh, available in the technique section, right? So comparing these two frequency, you can determine what the functional group is presence in your product. Okay, so let's, uh, for example, let's look at this. Uh, frequency here is around 3000. So if I come here, around 3000, right, CH, uh, yeah, CH and CH2 and CH uh, right here, right? You have, I have CH2 and all the CH stretch are right here. So then I can write it down here as this is my CH or CH2, okay, right? So I do have CH and CH2 right here, right? In, uh, in my uh, isopenta acetate ester. And the next frequency I'm looking at is at absorbance at 3000, uh, this is between 17 and 1800. So comparing with this data, I have an ester right here. So then I know that uh, I have a 
ester functional group present in this molecule, right? Right here, ester. Okay, so that's how you can tell uh, the difference between uh, uh, alcohol uh, spectrum and, and ester spectrum, right? You want to compare the two spectra and determine whether you have the product or, or the re if the reaction doesn't work, you have an alcohol band right here. Okay, if it's very big, alcohol band is OH, right? Alcohol will be OH. So you're expecting a huge band around 3,000 and greater than 3,000, right? That would be huge right here. But I don't have it, so I do have an ester. So this is, I definitely know that um, this is my IR spectrum of uh, ester, right? So that's how you can analyze the product, okay, using IR spectrum. Another method to analyze the structure is using proton enema. Okay, this is optional because some instructor may require you to look at NMR spectrum as well. But um, if they don't, you can also skip this slide. Uh, you don't need to listen to it. But I'm going to uh, briefly explain, explain this just in case uh, some instructor uh, put in proton NMR spectrum for you. Okay, so this is, uh, let's say this is the proton NMR spectrum of uh, isopentaacetate, right? So on the x axis, you will see uh, uh, chemical shifts, okay? Chemical shifts um, on the right, we call this uh, F field or high field, okay? And then on the uh, left here, uh, we call it down field, okay? Right is a F field and left is a down field. Down field means protons that are attached to electron withdrawing group, they get uh, drawn further down field, okay? They will appear in a, on the left side of the spectrum. Okay, and then you will see the number of peaks. So number of peaks corresponding number of protons in a molecule, okay? And also you will see at the bottom the integral values. Integral values mean um, area under each peak represent the number of protons, okay? So, um, and if you look at the peaks, uh, some of them are doubler, some of them are singlet and multiplet. Right? So depending on the, the structure of an ester, they can have a, a proton spectrum can be different, okay? Um, uh, let's say I have, um, this is a proton spectrum isopentaacetate, so, so let's do that here. So, so let's, uh, I always like to identify a proton that is further away, right? So proton further away um, is, um, around 4.1 ppm right here, right? This proton right here, right? These are all cluttered together. So I will determine this later. So I like to identify this proton that is further downstream at around 4.1 ppm, right? Chemical shift is around 4.1 ppm. So that means this proton is attached to electron withdrawing group, right? Electron withdrawing group, and I look at my structure Okay, and I can see that uh, area under this peak is two. That means there's two proton attached to electron withdrawing group. And I look at the structure and there's two proton right here. So then I'll consider this as a B, CH2, right? CH2 right here. Okay, and next we're moving on to this uh, proton right here is around 2 ppm. Okay, the chemical chemical shift is uh, printed on the top. So two, around 2 ppm, and it is a singlet. Singlet means it has no neighboring proton, so it will appear as a standalone proton, and it has 2 ppm. So and the chemical, uh, the integral value is three. That means it has three hydrogen. So then I look at the structure and I will call this A. Oops, A. So this will be my CH3 group right here, right? So na no neighboring proton, so it will be singlet, okay? Yeah, I think in the, lecture series, uh, your instructor must explain to you 
the splitting pattern. I can do that here too. Um, so let's continue with the uh, with the proton spectrum first, right here. So it's D. So another one is put it here D, and I see a multiplet here with a one pro one. So integral of one means there's only one proton. So looking back at the structure. Okay, there's one proton here, CH. So I will call this D. So D will be, let me write it here. So D will be right here, right? Okay, and going on to next chemical shift, C is around 1.5 with proton integral value of 2. So that will be C right here, right? CH2. Okay, and uh, CH2 for this guy. Okay, I am not worried about the splitting pattern yet. I'm just uh, assigning the uh, chemical shift and the area. Okay, uh, using the chemical shift value and the area. Okay, and um, next I have um, chemical shift of 0 0.93 or 92 right here with the uh, um, Integral of 5.73, so the integral is about 6. That means two methyl groups is present. So then I will know that this is E and F, right? Two methyl group right here, okay? So basically, I'm using the chemical shift and the integral values to assign the uh, protons on the structure, right? You're looking at the structure and comparing with the proton NMR spectrum. So if you can also verify using the splitting pattern, um, it's a n plus one rule, right? The, the splitting pattern is n, I will, I will write here, n plus one rule, right? So that's your splitting pattern right here. Splitting pattern, right? Splitting pattern is n plus one rule. So uh, multiplicity of E and F Right, so this is CH3 right here, CH3 and CH3, right, and it has neighbor one neighboring proton, okay, so it will be doublet, right, so it has um, it has one neighboring proton, it will be uh, doublet, so it will be one plus one, so the n is equal to one plus one equal to two, so doublet. Okay, so that will be E and F. They are in the same chemical environment, so they appear right here in the same position. Okay, so but it is a doublet, right? Um, if you look at D, it is a multiplet. Multiplet mean is splitting into multiple pattern. So if I look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so let's say you have a, a neighboring proton three here. Okay, so and then you have a neighboring proton three, so six plus one is going to be seven. So this we just call it multiplet. Okay, and if you look at proton C right here, right again, this is going to be multiplet. You have one neighboring proton and another two neighboring protons, so n is equal to three plus one is four, so one, two, three, four. So it's going to be quartet for this proton number C right here, right? If you look at B, okay, B is next to two proton, so two plus one is three, so it will be triplet right here, okay? A is a standalone, there's no proton, so it's gonna be singlet, right? So that's how you interpret our uh, NMR um, spectrum, okay? Uh, this is optional, so, uh, um, yeah, you may not need to do this. So if you, uh, if the if the instructor don't tell you to do this, then you don't have to do it. All right. So IR spectrum is enough, and make sure to record down boiling point, and make sure to smell the ester. So yeah, good luck with the ester lab. <laughs>